Hey, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. I spent this weekend in Mansfield, Ohio at the annual Civil War show. It is a great collector's event. It's been going on for years. It's highly regarded. It is one of the best in the country. If you have not been to a Civil War show, to a physical show, to be able to lay your hands on artifacts, to be able to touch old photographs, to be able to meet folks and network, uh, make new friends, learn a lot about the Civil War, about material culture, about artifacts from folks who have been collecting from a few years up to a lifetime. Civil War shows are just a terrific place to do that. For me and for Civil War Magazine, we set up at the shows and we're really there for a couple of reasons. We go there, of course, in part to sell subscriptions and sell books, but uh, we're also going there to meet everybody, to greet everybody, to get ideas for stories and to scan photographs. In fact, uh, we scanned 138 photographs. I don't know that that's a record, but it's pretty darn good. Fantastic time. And I want to share a couple of examples with you. Before I do that, I want to give a shout out. Several folks who watch this channel on YouTube stopped by. So I want to say hello, including Thomas Wilson. I really appreciate the conversation. It was just a great time. So let me get into the highlights so that you can get just a sense of what comes in. And before I share them, I should tell you that I usually put the word out and folks who are regular attendees know that I'm going to have my professional grade scanner set up and I encourage everyone to bring your best images so that I can scan them. We make high resolution archival versions according to the Library of Congress standards. And some of those images will wind up in future issues of the magazine. We try to get as many as possible. So two of the images that came into the show today, I want to take a look at with you. And granted, I, I want to tell you up front, there's, these are fresh. I haven't really done any research at all, just the bare amount of research. So here's the first one. Yes, this is a Confederate officer in Mansfield, Ohio. Even more so, this image came out of Michigan and the owner brought it by the table. It is an absolutely pristine amber type. For those of you who are new to collecting photography, that's an image made on glass. It is, come, it is out of Richmond, Virginia, and the photographer is Charles R. Reese. Those of you who know Confederate photography and know of Charles Reese know that he is one of the most highly regarded, most collectible photographers within Confederate photography. And um, if you look closely down to the right along the line where the baseboard meets the back ground, you'll see the name etched into the emulsion, Reese, R-E-E-S. And this has all the hallmarks of a Reese image. The column, which is part of the studio, the tinting, it's not overdone, wonderfully tinted. Don't let the brass mat fool you. You can see the mat has a lot of discoloration caused by the elements that have caused some erosion over time. None of that has affected, affected the image surface. Oh, and then I mentioned it's a half plate. That is, that's a big image. That's an unusual image. So there you have a wonderful image of Reese. I've never seen this one before. It's a great pose, great clarity, great contrast. We do not know his name. Perhaps someone has another image of him. Could be an ambrotype, a tintype, a carte de visite. Maybe you've seen his face in a book. I have yet to run it through Civil War Photo Sleuth, which uses face recognition technology, but I'll be doing that in coming days. And if I get a hit, you can be sure that I'll be doing a follow-up episode to tell you what I found. 
So that's the first image. The second image I want to show you is on the Union side. And this is a young man. Uh, he's 19 year old, William E. Neff. Uh, re residents uh, resides in Concord, New Hampshire. And um, he joined the 8th New Hampshire Infantry in March of 1862. Started out as a private. He was promoted to corporal in 1864. Really great pose of him here. It looks like he has his newly issued musket. You can see his canteen looks brand spanking new with the cover on it. And he's posed in the studio in this carte de visite format photograph. And for those of you who are new to photography, the carte de visite is the paper photograph. Uh, the word carte de visite in English is visiting card. And they're about the size of a modern trading card. They were wildly popular during the war. So uh, this image didn't stand alone. There was something else with it. And that was, that is a letter. I want to read you the letter. It's undated, but I think you'll find out in a minute. You'll see where, uh, where it's from. And I should mention the 8th spent most of its time in Louisiana. So let me read the letter to you. It's simply dated Monday morning. Here we go. Quote, as I did not get my letter finished, so as to send it Saturday, I will write a few lines more and send it this morning. I've been doing guard duty for the last 24 hours, that is, on two hours at a time and off four at a time. News came this morning that there has been a battle in Maryland between Miles and Jackson, and we had taken 500 prisoners. Now, that's, that's the clue. So the reference here is to the Maryland campaign. In September of 1862, it ends with the surrender of the Harper's Ferry garrison of 12,000 Union soldiers by Colonel Dixon Miles to Stonewall Jackson. So I believe this letter was written sometime after September 15th, 1862. So let's continue. He mentions the battle between Miles and Jackson, 500 prisoners, whatever news, whatever news source he used, uh, there was not 500 prisoners. This was not a Union victory. He continues and he says, I hope we shall succeed in giving the rebels a whipping that they will remember and crush them. Continues and he says, crush them before they leave out this rebellion. He adds another detail here. I went over to the 11th Massachusetts the other day to find Mr. Spiller, but he had gone home. I received a letter from a day or two since said that West Concord friends were all well and Sammy and Mr. Own had enlisted for nine months. I hope this rebellion will be put down so we can all go home with the nine months men. He enlisted for two years, I believe. But I have never seen a day since I came to New Hampshire that I was sorry I enlisted. And if I was at home today, knowing what I do now, I would enlist before a week. So his writing is a little, little hard to, to read here, but basically he's saying, hey, I enlisted, I'm in for the war, and if I had to do it again, I would do it. He continues, I am glad to see New Hampshire, as well as the whole North, turn out men in such overwhelming numbers. And it does seem to me as though the most of the fighting would be done this fall, but there is no telling for certain when there will be peace again. Our regiment has guns out on picket duty today. They will stay 25 hours, but these who have been as guard do not have Jim and Horton are well and in good spirits. Right often from your most affectionate brother, W.E.H. So this is a classic Civil War letter. Starts out by saying, hey, how you doing? Um, sorry, I didn't write earlier or didn't finish my letter. And then he gives a little bit of news about what he's up to. And then he shares news that he has heard. He shares his personal viewpoint. He asks about home, wants to give his love to everyone, then signs his name. 
This is pretty classic Civil War letter writing. And young William does it in style. A little bit limited on the vocabulary, but you get the idea of what he said. So there you have it. Two images and a related letter coming out of the Ohio Civil War show, just to give you a sense of all the wonderful things that you can find. And I should also say, a lot of this stuff is for sale. So if you get a chance, if you're interested in Civil War collecting, come by one of the shows. They're held all over the country. Besides Mansfield, Ohio, Franklin, Tennessee, Gettysburg, Richmond, a bunch of other places. So check them out. Until next time, we'll see you on the trail. Bye.